Ik ben in het Europees Parlement in Brussel. En hier is de gast Sandra Galina, de hoofdonderhandelaar van de vaccinatiecontracten. Zij is directeur-generaal voor de volksgezondheid bij de Europese Commissie. En valt dus direct onder Ursula van der Leyen. Ik zit in de onderzoekscommissie COVID-19 en zal haar ondervragen over de totstandkoming van de vaccinatiecontracten. Want hier is iets raars aan de hand. De New York Times heeft onthuld dat Von der Leyen en Albert Bourla, de directeur van Pfizer, een maand lang sms-berichten hebben uitgewisseld over de vaccinatiecontracten. Vervolgens heeft een journalist een formeel verzoek gedaan om die sms-berichten openbaar te maken. Volkomen logisch, dat is een normale transparantie-eis. Maar de Europese Commissie bleef weigeren. De onafhankelijke Europese ombudsman concludeerde na een onderzoek dat hier sprake is van wanbeleid. Een heel duidelijke veroordeling van het optreden van de Europese Commissie. Maar tot op de dag van vandaag blijft de Europese Commissie weigeren om de sms-berichten openbaar te maken. Toen dit in juli bekend werd, heb ik met spoed schriftelijke vragen gesteld aan Ursula van der Leyen. Het is mijn primaire taak als volksvertegenwoordiger om de Europese Commissie te controleren. Maar intussen is de voorzitter van het Europees Parlement nog steeds bezig met het onderzoeken of ik deze vragen wel mag indienen. De voorzitter van het Europees Parlement is mevrouw Metzola en zij is van dezelfde Europese partij als mevrouw van der Leyen, het Europese CDA. Hoe kunnen ze dit in vredesnaam nog democratisch noemen? Daarom ga ik vandaag mijn vragen maar aan de hoofdonderhandelaar mevrouw Galina stellen. Zij was erbij en zij zou alles moeten weten over deze contracten. Welcome, Mrs. Galina. Um, you were the EU's uh, lead negotiator on the COVID-19 vaccine contracts. However, when the Commission announced its bigger ever deal for 1.8 billion biotech Pfizer doses, Mrs. von der Leyen took the credit. Your name wasn't even mentioned in the New York Times article that described how the Commission's president and Albert Borla, the CEO of Pfizer, had for a month exchanged text messages related to the COVID-19 vaccine contracts. A request for public access to this text was submitted by a journalist, but the Commission refused to give access to these messages. The Ombudsman concluded recently on July 7, uh, 2022 that the way in which the Commission handled the request by the complainant constitute maladministration that the poor handling of this issue should be a wake-up call for all EU institutions. Mrs. Galina, you are not on the oath, but we need honest answers. This, these questions and answers are being recorded and with that also remembered, and the truth always comes out eventually. Please keep that in mind. Now my questions. How is it possible that you were the lead negotiator and that Mrs. von der Leyen was talking directly to the CEO of Pfizer about these vaccine contracts? Were you aware of these text messages of Mrs. von der Leyen at the time? If yes, could you please detail how this went? If not, how can you know that no commitments were made that hindered your negotiations? Why was Why has the Commission not made these text messages public when the Ombudsman asks to do so? What is being kept hidden? I'm really looking for your answers. Thank you very much. To all the questions that Honorable Ross has put, you know, I would defer to the answers that the Commission has officially given on behalf also of the President. I would not dream to give you my answers, you know, as a lead negotiator, I take the orders and the instructions also from the President. I was not a, a sort of, of rocket going out. So, I mean, my feeling was that the BioNTech Pfizer third contract was, just like the other contracts, a contract where there were exchanges between, I would say, the upper levels. And then, you know, we were working on that, but we were certainly discussing uh, all the elements of the contract. There was never, and I repeat, the member states would need to know really step by step. So. It's a bit facile to say this has been done by the president. No, this has been uh, decided by the member states. So I would suggest that when you have your auditions or whatever, there is also space for them to, oh, yes. uh, you know. After so, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. But because, you know, my version, it's very clear. We were 
negotiating on behalf and we were submitting what it was possible and what and sometimes they were saying no we don't want this we want that in times of urgency some were telling us no we don't care about that we want the doses we don't care about these things that you are searching you know um, and I don't want to mention the word liability but liability I'm very proud that we got what we got because you know we would not give up on liability that's the team was decided we wanted the judge to be able to judge on a case of adverse effects in Europe. We are Europe. Somebody who has an adverse effect goes to a judge. That's it. And has indemnification. U ziet het, de Europese Commissie blijft weigeren om openheid over de sms-berichten van Van der Leyen te geven. De transparantie blijft ver te zoeken. En dat terwijl het hier over uw belastinggeld gaat. Ik blijf me voor u inzetten om de feiten boven tafel te krijgen.